Make sure I have enough time on the card. 12 minutes, all right. So, I started reading The Orthodox Way by Bishop Clissos Ware, and I got through the prologue, and uh, talks about signposts uh, on the way. That's what it's entitled. Um, and so it goes on into chapter one, and it talks about God as mystery. Um, so it has at the start Second uh, Corinthians six nine, uh, unknown and yet well known. Uh, it has quotes by uh, the Desert Fathers, um, St. Simon, the New Theologian, and Evagrius of Pontus. So, some um, spiritual leaders and whatnot. So, um, he talks about how God is near, yet other, um, the otherness, yet nearness of the eternal. So, what stuck out to me was that he goes on to say that the Greek fathers insisted, a God who is comprehensible is not God. A God, that is to say, whom we claim to understand exhaustively through the resources of, resources of our own reasoning brain, turns out to be no more than an idol, fashioned in our own image. Such a God is more emphatically not the true and living God of the Bible and the Church. Man is made in God's image, but the reverse is not true. So, it's, it's pretty simple to see um, the point here at the start of the chapter, uh, he he says that the traveler upon the spiritual way, which the way is the Christian life uh, going towards Christ in as a Christian, um, because the Christianity was called from its earliest its beginnings, the way, just simply the way. Um, like other, uh, I guess you could say, spiritual movements. Um, I think, for example, Buddhism, uh, Dharma is the way. Um, that's what the word means in Sanskrit. And that's what Buddhism is called in Sanskrit, is just Dharma. So, um, that's an example. But, anyway, Christ said he was the way, and so it can be tied into that. Um, you know, the Christian life, what's the point of that? It's Christ, so, the way. Uh, but he says that, the further this traveler, um, upon the way, spiritual way, advances, he becomes increasingly conscious, or she, conscious of two constraining facts um, of the otherness and yet the nearness of the eternal. So, um, God is near and other, and so, um, the other thing was that he says, yet in the second place, this God of mystery is at the same time uniquely close to us, filling all things present everywhere around us and within us. And he is present not merely as an atmosphere or nameless force, but in a personal way. The God who is infinitely beyond our understanding reveals himself to us as person. He calls us each by our name, and we answer him. Between ourselves and the transcendent God, there is a relationship of love, 
similar in kind to that between each of us and those other human beings dearest to us. We know other humans through our love for them and through theirs for us. So it is also with God. In the words of St. Nicholas Cabasillus, God is our God our King is more affectionate than any friend, more just than any ruler, more loving than any father, more a part of us than our own limbs, more necessary to us than our own heart. So, well, what I have had to say about all that was, um, it kind of reminded me of people who maybe don't have faith because you know, they've never seen God or whatever, um, because they, they, you know, don't feel his presence, and so it would do us all well to remember that there's that otherness, um, he's not all, com you know, it's not c completely comprehensible, and the very fact that he created the universe, uh, everything in ex existence, uh, is a testament to that fact, because if he created everything, he's outside of it by nature, so, yeah, that's about it, um, there's some interesting stuff from the book, and, uh, you know, uh, take from it what you will, I'll see you all later.